Welcome to the channel. Today at the request of a channel member, we'll be walking through the upgrade process for the Tube's ZB P7 PoE coordinator, but equally applies to the EFR32 as well. Now this is not an over the air update, so it's a little bit more involved than just clicking a button, but it's still super easy once you know the process. So let's get upgrading to the latest and greatest. You'll obviously need a Tube ZB PoE coordinator. Links in the description with discount codes if you want to pick one up. Now there are many ways of upgrading the Tube ZB P7 coordinator, but I'm going to take you through the easiest way. And for this you're going to need a version of Home Assistant that can run add-ons. This means the Home Assistant OS version or the supervised version. To check if you're running one of these versions, navigate to Settings, About, if you see Supervisor, then you're good to go. You'll obviously need a desktop and a PoE connected to the same network with the internet access. And that's it. So let's get upgrading. Navigate to the Tube's ZB add-on GitHub site. Link in the description. Press the blue button for Add Add-on Repository. You'll be navigated across to a page to confirm the location of your Home Assistant instance. Verify the URL or use the pencil to the right of the URL to change it accordingly. Press open link. You'll be taken to the custom repositories directory list and the new custom repository will be populated. Now simply press add. The new tube ZB repository will be added to the list. Now press close. Now refresh your browser page. Scroll down and you should now see three new add-ons have been made available. Now we're going to be upgrading a P7 which is a Texas Instruments CC2652 chipset, but if you had an EFR32, you could select the Silicon Labs add-on instead. Select the appropriate add-on. Now press install. Once installed, we'll need to make some configuration changes. Press configuration. Now our device is not connected directly to Home Assistant, but the flasher needs a device field populated, although it will not be used. So select the first option for the dev TTYS1. In the network device, we need to populate the IP address of your Tube ZB coordinator that you can find on your router. Once you have found this, you can navigate to this IP address on a separate tab. This will bring up the web interface for your Tube ZB coordinator. Enter the IP address colon 6638 into the network address field. Toggle on the enable bootloader mode with ESP Home. The flash USB device and hardware flow can be left in their state, which is toggled off. We now come to the variable section of pointing the firmware flasher at the version of the firmware you wish to load. This will be dependent upon which tube ZBPoE coordinator you have purchased. Now open up a new tab and navigate to the GitHub page for the firmwares for the Texas Instruments P2 and P7 PoE coordinators. I'll put links to the GitHub site you need to navigate to in the description. Select the CC1352P7 firmware. Right click the raw button to the right of the screen. Select copy link. Head back into the flasher add-on configuration. Now toggle on show unused optional configuration options. Paste the link that you just copied into the firmware URL. Now scroll down and press save. Now before we start flashing, we need to stop ZHA or zigbee to mqtt from accessing the ZB Tubes coordinator. I'll stop ZHA, but you can do likewise for zigbee to mqtt simply by stopping the zigbee to mqtt add-on. Open up a new tab with Home Assistant open. Navigate to Settings, Devices and Services. Search for and select zigbee home automation. Press the three dots to the right of configuration. Select Disable and confirm with disable. Now switch back to your tab that you're using for your ZB flasher configuration and check your entries are correct and that you've pressed saved, which should now be grayed out. Now simply press start. Now move across to the log files. You should see that the flashing has started. This will take between five to six minutes, so be patient. Periodically press the refresh button to monitor the progress although it will appear that nothing is happening. When finished, we are looking for the words write done and that the write has been successful. And in green writing, the script exited with code zero, which means it was successful. Now switch back to the info tab. 
and press stop. Now let's re-enable ZHA. Switch back to the tab where you disabled ZHA. Press enable. ZHA will initialize and start. This might take some time depending upon your network as it needs to restore a backup as the firmware would have wiped the current configuration. Once finished, if we navigate into the device's hyperlink, all your devices will be exactly as you left them. And we're finished. So that's the firmware upgrade for a Tube ZB P7. Quick and simple, although not over the air at this point. The same process applies to the Silicon Labs EFR32 devices by selecting the different add-on or to the P2 variant of the Tube ZB by selecting a different firmware. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, then hit that like button, comment and share, and if you want access to similar material, then subscribe or maybe become a member and get early access to material plus other perks. And if I helped you upgrade your device to the latest firmware, then maybe a super thanks or a PayPal donation. It's really appreciated. Until the next one, let's keep those devices running on the latest and greatest.